Mark Merowitz is a professor at the State University of New York Maritime College. He joins us now live from New York. Thank you for joining us on the program. I don't think anyone predicted such a strong showing for Pete Buttigieg. What does this mean for this, his campaign? First of all, you say there's a strong showing for Pete Buttigieg. We don't even know what the results are. So I think that is a premature, first of all. Uh, second of all, the Iowa caucus was a disaster, and it's questionable whether there was an Iowa caucus, but we, we didn't even know the results, as I just said. But this is very, very significant. And particularly, uh, I understand from the news that uh, John Kerry was overheard uh, worried about Sanders' rise and that Sanders could take down the Democratic Party. Right now, as I see it, the Democratic Party is in free fall. It had a disastrous week. Uh, with basically today, for example, the president likely will be acquitted after the House put all of its energy in impeachment. Um, and the president gave a State of the Union address yesterday. Trump is surging and the Democrats are in disarray. That's how I see it. As far as Sanders is concerned, it's unlikely that Sanders, if he's the candidate, will win the election because of his uh, policies, particularly Medicare for all, that does not attract the centrist core of this country. And I think that the, if the, Demo if the Democrats want to do it, then maybe they want to have a suicide mission. That's how I see it. Yeah, certainly the snafu <clears throat> with the results in Iowa don't really reflect well for the Democrats um, by any means. And Trump was quick to capitalize on that. Do you think that this will give a boost to Trump's reelection campaign? Or is this just a blip that voters will ultimately forgive once we focus on the New Hampshire primary, which is next Tuesday? Well, you know, there's no forgiveness in politics. Um, the Democrats, and I think Kerry reflects that, understand that they are in a very dangerous, precarious situation. And the one candidate who is not on the ballot in Iowa, Mike Bloomberg, is the one that really benefited the most from this snafu, as you say, and this confusion, because he actually could capitalize on this and come out very strong. Biden is very weak. And that is uh, worrisome for the centrist Democrats in terms of being able to win the election against Trump. Uh, I don't think they can win the election against Trump with Sanders. Uh, Sanders' policies are very extreme to the left, and Trump is the incumbent, and he's even an impeached president. And his, uh, you know, his, he, he claims, he states, the economy is very good. As long as the economy is good, um, you know, then you come along with Sanders and his policies. He wants to eliminate private uh, health insurance in this country. How is that going to, uh, how is that going to go down in terms of? Uh, of the popular vote here. I don't see it. I don't see it. So mm -hmm. yes, it, this is a benefit, a, a benefit. The winners yesterday were not Sanders, but Mike Bloomberg and Donald Trump. Yeah, you mentioned uh, the former Vice President uh, Joe Vice Biden. President. Um, after the uh, Iowa caucus, when we were not getting the results, not getting the results, and it was clear that it would be some time before we got the results, the candidates went to New Hampshire, and all of them were um, claiming some sort of victory, except for Joe Biden. And fair enough, the results aren't in yet. It is still very preliminary. But so far, he is showing fourth place. Is that a surprise? And what does that mean for him, potentially? Well, again, we really don't know the results. Biden has been running uh, very well in terms of Sa Sanders, if you believe any of the numbers. But, you know, uh, based on this uh, debacle, it it's a good question whether we would believe any of these results. We have many polls along that. Most of the polls at the present time show Biden up on top. Sanders, Biden, they're, you know, running strongly, Buttigieg. So one, I is it a blip? Well, I think it's really a disaster in terms of credibility. I don't know about the numbers. The whole Iowa caucus idea, I was watching on Twitter, someone tweeted uh, how they gave three delegates to Buttigieg with a coin toss, heads or tails. Heads, Buttigieg gets three delegates. So that really demeans the American political process and shows the complete fallacy and foolishness of this Iowa caucus. It, it is an aberration. And it shouldn't be given as much emphasis as it does. Given that, um, this was a very, very strong blow against Biden. And if, if New Hampshire is repeated, and if he does poorly in New Hampshire, he's in serious trouble. And so is the Democratic Party in serious trouble. Truthfully, you have uh, Nancy Pelosi ripping up the president's speech. Doesn't that show a level 
of besides being disrespectful, but desperation on the part of the Democrats with Iowa, they're having an awful, awful time. And I don't know how they re recoup from it if they continue in this divisive fashion, really destroying one another. They need to group around a candidate or they will, uh, they will lose. Yeah, they certainly can't uh, seem to pull things together, the Democratic Party. Mark Mirowitz, uh, live from New York, thank you for your time today.